Dustin, uh, thanks for being here, man. Yeah, really. man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Um, just got a few things I want to talk to you about. So we, before we started, uh, we were just sitting here shooting the crap about real estate. Yeah. You know, you know we're both in it and, uh, uh, you're doing rentals. You've, I think you've got a pretty large portfolio of yourself, right? Yeah. We've got a total of, uh, 65 units right now. Wow. Uh, with a goal to get over a hundred by the end of the year. So. By the end of this year. Yeah. That's awesome. It's an aggressive goal, aggressive goal, but we'll see. Yeah. How, how long did it take you to get 65? Uh, is that doors or units? How many doors do you have? That's no, 65, 65 doors. 65 doors. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as different properties, you know, mm-hmm. there's some apartments in there. There's some single family yep. houses, stuff like that. Yep. So, you know, it's kind of funny when you asked how long, and I don't know how in depth you want to go on this, but I was having a uh, conversation on a um, an investment page mm-hmm. this weekend. I started really in 2014, uh, but at the time I was working full time and it was just that fear factor, man. Yeah. And it took me until 2019. Uh, and it was one of those things where, you know, I kept saying, this is what I want. This is where I feel I was being led. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just kind of kept hearing this audible voice of man, just, just take the leap of faith. Take it. And so up until 2019, I only had like five units. Wow. So since 2019 till now we've, you know, got over 60 units. We've, you know, doubled it last year. That's amazing. Itself. So it's just one of those things where it's a snowball effect. Mm-hmm. Once you just step out in faith and let go of the fear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I had, I'd done a little bit of uh, just back in research ahead of time. And I talked to a few people before you came in because I want to make sure that, um, That's scary. you know, yeah, all, all <laughs> panned out positive. <laughs> I paid them well. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that um, what I knew going in um, about like your background and what you've come from to where you're at was yeah. as accurate as I thought it was. Yeah. Um, so I know you were in the banking industry for yeah, how spent, long, 15 years or so? I spent 15 years a, as a uh, lender. Okay. Um, but interestingly, before that, um, growing up, my when I was in school, my mother was a real estate agent. Mm-hmm. And then she and my stepdad opened a mortgage office. So I'm a teenager hanging out in the mortgage office, mortgage running room. files and, mm-hmm. and doing all that stuff. That's uh, awesome. So then a couple of years into college, switched to finance and started in banking while I was actually in college. Yeah. So. And you had all the, the designations, right? Going through all that, you had pretty much the ones that made sense to get. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've got a degree in finance uh, with a master's in business. Mm. Uh, I went to the graduate school of banking at LSU. That's a three year school. Um, and so then various, you know, other consumer uh, credit schools, co- uh, commercial credit schools, things like that along the way. So, wow. yeah. yeah. So you've just been, you've just been yeah. like molded by <laughs> finance since a teenager. All, all of that finance world. And it's like, Hey, you, you know, um, kind of what society tells you is, Hey, you, you know, get a job, get the education. You're going to go work for this get company. Get your salary, get, yeah. be comfortable, get your 401k. And then I'm like, wait, this is not what I want. Yep. Uh, I'm, you know, most of my clients were investors. Mm. That's what they did. Yep. And I'm watching them do it. And I'm like, Hey, I can do this. Yeah. Like, come (laughs) on, man. Like I I could be doing this. And it, like I said, it was just that fear factor. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, a whole bunch of schooling all for not other than it does help me with deal analysis. I'm sure it does now. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) You know how to negotiate on the back end, get the points down, get your better APRs, all that good stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Um, yeah, I had a few little keywords here. Uh, cause I, some people I talked to um, threw out some, you know, some good, good words. It was, um, you know, you went from this secure safety job of, you know, you're nine to five, you're doing great. You know, it may not be nine to five, but, you know, yeah, you know, whatever <laughs> that looked like. Yeah, supposedly, <laughs> um, you know, banking career, you know, oh, yeah. with all the designations, all the degrees, you, you had yeah. a great. And then you, you took the leap of faith and left the safety net, left the security yep. And, uh, and just went, ventured right into entrepreneurship. Yep. And I think it's done well for you. Well, I appreciate it. You know, um, there, there's a part that, because when you read a lot uh, and you study a lot of other people, mm-hmm. um, but there's a part in there, the biggest piece I think that was missed during that whole year, I call it like a year in the wilderness. Yeah. Um, because like up until that point, I had been grounded in you get up, you go to work Monday through Friday, you get home, you got your vacations. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden it's like the world is open. Yeah. 
and I don't know what to do with myself. It's almost like a like a loss of identity, and it yeah. takes. I tell people that are looking to do it, I'm like, look, don't expect to, you know, leave on Friday and on Monday you're you're hitting the ground running. <laughs> you're gonna be like, you know, running in circles. It took me a good part of a year to figure out like just who I was yeah. anymore. Right, because you grew up 15 years of banking. This yeah. is who I am. Well, and now other, what? I woke up Monday morning at seven because yeah. I got to be at work by nine. <laughs> The other interesting thing, uh, it's kind of a, a sad part of it, um, but it's just what it was. Uh, you know, in, in all of those years of banking and lending, you develop relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, and you think that these are relationships that are very grounded. But you realize that once you're out on your own and you no longer have the same thing to offer, um, those relationships weren't really what you mm -hmm. thought they were. And so oh. a lot of people that I thought we were really close just really weren't there anymore. Yeah. Um, but it does show you who really was, you, you right. know, where, where those strong relationships were to start with. So, wow. It was an interesting part. Yeah. That's bold. That's big. Yeah. That's good. Um, <clears throat> so you, you've got 65 doors, uh, yeah. you know, across, is that just in Tennessee, just in this area? Yeah. Or yeah. So I've, yeah, it's all in Tennessee. It's mostly Sevier County, um, about a third in, or two thirds in Sevier County, a third in Knox County. Mm -hmm. Um, a mix between uh, commercial properties and residential properties. Okay. Um, I've looked at expanding out, um, but there's so much opportunity. It's like, why? Yeah. You know, I, I read all kinds of investment blogs and everybody's like, what's the hot area? Where, where are they going? It's and, here. Yeah. Like, why, why am I expanding out when the opportunity's here? Yeah. Do you, do you have uh, any short-term rentals? So I had some, I sold them this past year uh, because, I mean, it was, it was just, I mean. The market's wild. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it's flattening off here lately. I don't know, you may be seeing something different, but during this past year, it was just insane. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the money, I always follow a formula. I've got a pretty strict formula of pretty much everything I do. Okay. Uh, and my formula is whatever I'm making on, it, it's a 10-year payback. Okay. So if I can sell it and make more and it takes me longer than 10 years to make that on a monthly cash flow. Okay. It's a sell. Hmm. So, um, everybody, you have to develop your own formula, your right. own strategy for what works for you. But for me, you know, if, if it's going to generate me $300 a month, um, you know, over a 10 year period, um, 36,000. Yeah, exactly. So then if I can make more than 36,000 on a sell, it's gone. Sell it. Yeah. <clears throat> then you reinvest the money back into something else. Yeah. Find something else. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But most of the stuff I'm finding is stuff that people wouldn't touch. I mean, I've been told I'm crazy numerous times. Yeah. Are yeah. you having to do a lot of rehab stuff? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Getting uh, all the way down to the stubs. And well, and you can't find the cool stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, back back in when I was really getting going, uh, we were finding properties down in South Knoxville. That was a, I mean, that was a beautiful area to go. Um, I mean, I remember one house. My wife still jokes about it. There was literally... The back part of the roof was gone, mm -hmm. and there was a tree growing through, through the it. house. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, "Why are you buying this? It's gold." Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, so we bought it for seven, put fifty into it, uh, so we've got you know roughly sixty thousand total in it. And today it appraises for a hundred and sixty. Yeah, and it rents for thirteen hundred a month. Yeah, so it does great. Yeah, cash so, flowing on everything. That's yeah. great. Those are harder to come by now. Yeah, uh, with well, the market the changing. High. But there's still stuff out there. We closed on one Friday. Did you? Yeah, that's awesome. So, that's awesome. What kind of commercial property do, do you have? Is it just mainly, you know, apartment complexes, that kind of stuff? Or do you have no. any, uh, like, mini storage units or, you know, office buildings? Or what do you, what are you work with? I've got, I've got a strip center down in Seymour okay. uh, going down 411. Mm -hmm. I would love to have uh, some mini storage, but I haven't found anything where the number's yeah, quite right. Either. Those cap rates on those things are driven down so low by yeah. everybody. Um we're also doing, uh, anybody that's familiar with South Knoxville Seymour, um, the old Stella's Floors building right there by okay. Tipton Station, we're renovating that. Okay. It was an old motel um, that we're converting into office space. That's so, good. And do, you, do you have any uh, fear or risk buying office spaces knowing what happened in 2020 and a lot of, yeah, uh, you know, a lot of people went to work at home? Yes. Um, it, you know, I had that little strip center there. Uh, mm -hmm. and I had, I had one of my clients that called and said, Hey, this isn't working. Um, and I just took that over as my own. Is your uh, own office. Yeah. It's not a storefront. Um, but it's just my own little per personal space. Sweet. Um, so yeah, I mean, the thing is you got to understand the market, mm -hmm. uh, and you got to understand, I think what 
where you fit in the market. So that particular one that we're doing on Chapman Highway, yep. we're able to do it and price it at a, at a point to where we're still below the market. So I think while you may see some of that going on in 2020, if it happens again, you're going to see people trying to downsize and I've got the product for them to downsize okay. too. So, you, <laughs> you know, it's just finding the niche that works. Yeah, that's great. We, uh, we worked with a lot of people in 2020, uh, that just wanted to offload their, their properties. I, I vividly remember a couple of them. Um, he's got a, you know, a four bed and a three bed. He's like, I just need to sell these things just in case yeah. the market tanks. I was like, okay, we don't know what it's going to do, but yeah. you know, it's still renting. You got a couple months left, you know, you can, yeah. you'll be all right. And, uh, you know, we sold him. He did well on the sell, but it's that formula may be a little hard for, a, you know, the short term rental market because the, you know, the income yeah. these things make, you know, you could be looking at a, a four bed that'll do hundred and, you know, 10,000 a year on the rental. Yeah, um, exactly. But your selling point may not be a 10 year payoff. So, it, you know, but the market's high, and you're like, ah, I don't know what to do. So he ended up selling it for lower than what, I mean, you know, the market, yeah. you just took off. It went uh, crazy. I mean, in it 2021, was, after he sold it, I was like, hi, I'm so sorry. Even now I'm looking at prices. Well, I mean, I did the same thing. I sold mine in uh, July of last year Yep. and I could have got probably another hundred K for it yeah. if I'd waited till this year. But mm -hmm. you never, you don't look, I heard this, you don't look back at uh, the deals that you did, you, you know, it's done. Yeah. So you don't look back at what I could have made or what I could have bought. You, the only thing you can do is move forward. Yeah. Yeah. We sold, I sold a, a property in downtown Pigeon Forge. It was our first time we bought in 2013. Uh, and I, I guess I was sitting here after you said the, the 10 year deal, I yeah. was doing the numbers in my head. <laughs> I was like, I did really good. Yeah. You know, if, if that's the case, I did great. Yeah. You know, we made way more than what it was going to do over a 10 year period. So yeah, the trick is to reinvest it. You know, what else yep. can you do with it? <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, sitting in the bank can't do anything. Yeah. Cause there's so many other factors. Like if you really want to dive deep into the analysis, I mean, you're not just looking at your monthly return, you're looking at your anticipated appreciation and what you think it could do. And it, like, I, I'm getting into like really nerdy stuff. Yeah, but I'm, I feel like you enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like you can get into, you know, I'll, I'll do like time value of money, uh, simulations and all that stuff. It's crazy. Do you have a website for that or is it something you just came up with? It's just something that I do, okay. uh, you know, with the finance background, mm -hmm. it kind of reminds like, um, it's funny when you go and you look at the stuff on my desk, I don't know if you've ever seen like one of those movies where people have just like numbers scribbled all over the walls. Yeah. That's you. Uh, and they're like, you know, this person's crazy. Yeah. That's what happens when people come in my office. It's like, oh, I don't know if I want to be in here. Or not. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna... it's, I don't think this is a safe yeah, place. This is not safe. <laughs> this is not a safe space. Um, so you've got obviously a, a pretty wide background from banking, investing, um, into, I, I believe you had mentioned, uh, you know, a book that you're possibly looking yeah. to do and in the future, if it's not started now, I don't, I don't know the, uh, the timeline on that, but tell me a little bit about that, that, uh, yeah. the product you're talking about. So I'm working through, and I'm not exactly sure all that it entails, um, at the moment. I mean, it could be a book, it could be a seminar. I've done a couple of seminars talking this point. Um, and it's called the margin line. Okay. Um, and it's just idea of what I've gathered from business over the years. It's nothing new because, you know, finance is pretty much what it's always been and right. what it's always going to be. There's, there's new twists and turns, but the, the nuts of it are the same. But what I have experienced and what the margin line is, um, I'll tell you the analogy real quick. The margin line is actually a nautical term if anybody likes boating. Um, so it is the point on your boat at which, you know, above that point, you can take damage to your boat and not sink. Right. But if you take damage below that point, you're sinking. So with water. Yeah. When you apply that philosophy to our finances, um, most people just look at mm -hmm. what their income is or what their expenses are. You know, we all know the, the business, uh, you know, equation, which is, you know, profit is equal to your income minus your expenses. Mm -hmm. So what happens is we're either driving our income or we're driving our expenses. But what I'm trying to coach people into doing is looking at their margin. What is the difference? It's basically that profit, but then people don't look at it that way. Um, take, for example, somebody that's just a regular W-2 worker. Mm -hmm. You know, Dave Ramsey has been a huge success over the past, you know, 10, 15 years, Right. What he's driving, his sole talk is expense-driven. 
he's telling you get out of debt, yep. eliminate credit cards, eliminate all of this stuff so that you can lower your expenses, which is great because he knows that his target audience are employees. Right. You know, I'm not saying all of them, but the majority, majority. of them are W2 employees. Their income line to a certain extent is limited. Yep. They don't have control over it. Now, yeah, you can do good at work. You can, you know, get promotions. You can get raises and that yeah, sort second of thing. Job. Yeah. But there's not a ton that you can do to control that income line. So he's telling you just control the expenses. Okay. Um, but what happens is when you go out on business, um, I hear this a lot too, is people saying, oh, well, I've got, you know, a million dollar company or I've got a, a $5 million company. Well, which would you rather have? The million dollar company or the $5 million company? Yeah, Five million. It depends on what the expenses are. Right. What if I told you that $5 million company had $4.9 in expenses hmm. and the million dollar company had 200000 in expenses? Yeah. Which one's better? Right. So that's the thing is when you take every decision that you're making and you put it in context of how that affects your margin, um, that's when you can really um, make changes in your personal finances and your business finances because that margin is what's going to control you um, when things come, go wrong, because something's going to go wrong, especially in the rental business. Yep. Um, and too, you know, too often you hear, well, you need to set back six months of reserves. Six months of reserves are great. That's a fantastic idea, right? But what happens if you have a catastrophic event and your six months of reserves are gone? Hmm. What you should be doing is creating that space to reserve on a regular monthly basis. And we don't do that. Um, I know I'm kind of bouncing all over the place, but even back to your W-2 employee, what happens when you get a raise? Yeah, you spend more money. Most people go get, oh, yeah. well, we can afford a bigger house. We yep. can get this new car that I've been wanting, whatever. Yep. So the money's always spent, and you never do anything with your margin. Uh, and so that's kind of the the just a brief synopsis, the talk. Yep. Um, and there's different ways to expound it. Um, you know, I'm trying to develop um, strategic goals to where people can say, okay, what is a good margin? What is a bad margin? Yeah. What it, like, cause the same thing with like cap rate, you know, you yeah. Know, that well, can, I'm looking for a you know, return of 10 or 12 or whatever. Yeah. It depends on what your business is. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends. I mean, it's one of those case by case basis. You could have a, a business that has um, a high level of fixed cost. Well, if you know your costs are going to be pretty well fixed every month, you can get by with a little less margin. But if, you know, the majority of your expenses are variable, you need a bigger margin to, you know, to accommodate if something were to go wrong. Right. Um, Good. So margin is just, is profit. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yeah. I mean, it's profit, but it's also, it's kind of, I, I like to say margin because it gives you a different, context it's a different idea because when you tell somebody oh you make profit profit says you go spend it yeah uh and what i'm trying to get you to understand is margin is regular reoccurring uh you know what do you want that gap to be if you're going to sell a widget for a dollar how much is it going to cost you to to make that you, you know you want to yeah. drive that down as low yeah, as you possible keep it as low as you can because it's about consistency mm-hmm. wow it's a whole lot of <laughs> yeah. That's pretty deep, though, right? It, it, I guess you can apply that to uh, anything business related. So there's uh, there's not a set formula. Then it, it is as per per job or per well, you know. Yeah, th- there's not specifically a set formula. I will tell you this though: from all my years of banking experience and looking at finances, um, the companies that were very healthy, um, you could say that their margin was hovered around the forty percent okay range. So, you know, I don't have any scientific data at this point to back that up other than just, you know, years of experience kind of looking at, and and it makes sense if you apply that to your personal life um, and in your personal finances, a 40% margin makes a lot of sense. Um, The problem there is that we always like, I hope there's no mortgage people listening, but you know, they always take it off of gross because that's what the federal regulations, that's what Fannie and Freddie say you can do. You, you know, you can have a 36%, you know, housing ratio and up to, you know, 40 or 45% total ratio off of your gross. Off your gross, yeah. Well, when you take that back down to net, you, you know, you're much more like 70, 60, 70%. Yeah. And then when you start adding in electricity and groceries and all that stuff that's not yeah. accounted for. You're high. There are, you know, <laughs> you're getting a mortgage and you're 100% margined up. Yep. 
And that's the trick that people don't see. And then they wonder, well, why can't I, why am I struggling? Why am I living paycheck to paycheck? Yeah. You're maxed. Yeah. yeah they max you out. <clears throat> that's wild. Yeah. It's good. Uh, it's a different perspective. I like it. Um, it's a weird place in my head. Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> it makes sense though, if you think about it. So businesses operate that way. You, you should operate that way personally too. Yeah. You know, you can't go in the hole every month. You're going to lose it all. Well, that's what we do. Um, uh, you know, I keep a spreadsheet, of course, because I'm, I'm a spreadsheet dork. Are you a Google Live kind of guy, Google yep. Docs, or oh, are you yeah. Excel? No, I'm, I'm all on Google because Google's. I can pull it up no matter where I'm yep. at. Um, but it's all lumped in together because we're self-employed. And it is what it is. Yep. You, you know, there's no business income and personal income. It's, it's just income. Yeah, and my wife's self-employed too. So, um, so we lump it all in together. And... Um, you know, I'll tell you when I started this concept and when I started talking, it, I'm not coming from a point of saying, oh, I've, I've done it. I've conquered the system. You know, when I started this, we were, our margin was negative. Mm. Um, so you had to work your way out of the hole, but it, it, okay, here's where I am. And it gave me, you know, a drive and a motivation mm -hmm. to where are we going? And so now a year later, you know, we've got a positive $7,000 margin and I've got a goal of where to take it to. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but it's also driven some of the decisions that we made. You know, back to what we were talking about, about selling and flipping and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. We bought a fiveplex here in Kodak last October. We bought it for three fifty. I had an offer on the table a month ago for four sixty. Mm. So most people would say, sell. Take it, yeah. My my initial formula said sell. You, you know, the ten year return. But what I did was I broke it down. What does this do to our margin? And it was a break even on our margin because what I would have to do is take the income that I sold, use it to pay off additional things. Mm -hmm. um, and the best I could do was break even on my margin. And it's, it. what's the point? Yeah. I'm not going to um, break even. Yeah. So we, we mm -hmm. held on to it um, because future forward thinking, if rents increase, things appreciate, that'll be better for the margin. Right. So, Which it will. Yeah, that's the whole point is just, you know, making sure most, most business people that I've talked to, they don't even know what it is. Yeah. They have no clue. They don't know what they're running on a monthly basis. And so it's understanding what it is, how to calculate it, and then set goals that yeah. work for your business. <clears throat> so to the, let's just say a new investor is coming into the world and they're looking at a, you know, a short term or a long term rental. Um, can you evaluate this margin just on that property itself? Yeah. Okay. So if it's, you buy it, let's use these numbers. You buy it for a hundred grand. Mm -hmm. You got to put 20% down or 15. Let's just use 20. So you put $20,000 onto it. Um, so your mortgage is 850, your utilities and all that stuff come out to be another 150 bucks or a thousand dollars a month Yeah, on it. Um, what's a good goal for a margin on something that, you know, just easy, you know, just to kind of give a, a yeah. easy example. So um, I can tell you the goal that I use mm -hmm. uh, is I want to make $200 profit for every Fifty thousand dollars invested. Okay. So you know, if you're eighty thousand invested, you need to be at least three hundred dollars okay. profit a month. So if you're written that for uh, thirteen hundred, you should be doing good. You're doing good. That typically translates close to a, you know, depending on the deal, between a fifteen to twenty percent uh, rate of return mm -hmm. on your money that's invested. So you know, a lot of people look at cash on cash return, yep. um, and you want to say can I beat the stock market? Cause that's always, you know, where, where yeah, sure. the majority of people go and the stock market's gone crazy the past few years. Um, I, so, I, I mean, I would say you need to be at least a 10% return. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, you know, the, like we were talking about the problem with the stock market though, is it's so volatile. Yeah. At least with real estate, I feel like we did see a dip. We did see prices kind of reset in 2008, but for the most part they're, it's going to go up yep. you're going to inflate. And so you're going to gain some appreciation and things like that, that you're not calculating into there. Mm -hmm. um, now here's where it gets tricky. Um, it, investors like myself, we try to figure out how can I buy this property with no money out of pocket? Mm -hmm. So if I can be in this property with nothing invested, I can't calculate a, a cash on cash rate of return because it's infinite. Yep. I've got nothing. You're making in all deal. of it. Yeah. So I've come up with a formula that I, I try to get to, and that's return on debt. Okay. Uh, and that's what, you know, how much am I making for every dollar I've borrowed? Um, and so I try to get to a 5% return on debt. Okay. Uh, which generally equates to that 
two hundred for every fifty thousand. It's kind of funny how they both yeah. kind of back into that yeah, same that side. So, <clears throat> what's uh, what's some advice then to uh, some people to invest with no money? How do you do that? You um, know, raise money, you partner with people, or what? So I tell you how I got started was um, I actually grabbed a home equity line of credit off of my house, mm. um, and now at the time, like I said, I could buy a house for seven thousand, put fifty into it. Uh, and so I had a hundred thousand dollar line of credit. I can buy, go buy this house for cash, put my money into it, sixty thousand. Then go back to the bank and say, "Hey, I've got this property. It'll appraise for you know at the time one twenty. Sure, I'd like a sixty thousand dollar mortgage on it. Um, there's actually you can go online and see a lot of that stuff. It's it's called the Burr method, which is um, buy, renovate, refinance." Um, and then you, you hold it, you just Repeat. pull your equity. Is yeah. What it is? Yeah. Just keep on, yeah. keep on doing it again. <clears throat> so it, it's tricky though. Uh, and, and it gets trickier when the numbers get larger. Yeah, I'm sure. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so let's, that's currently where we're at. That's what we're working on. It's a larger line of credit. That's awesome. ultimately the way to do it. But the hardest part is working with, with lending mm. and understanding, you know, the bank's goal is to be as less risky as possible. So they want to see you put as much cash in the bank as, as you can. They want to see you put as much cash down as you can, and they want to see the lowest loan to value. So it's, you know, where do we find that happy medium? Understanding what they want and giving, you know, it's, it's all about compromise. Yeah. So you <clears throat> do a HELOC, mm -hmm. go buy the property, refi uh, you know, renovate it, all that good stuff. Yep. Go back to the same bank. Pay the get HELOC a mortgage, off. Right? Yeah. You get the mortgage, pay the HELOC off. Pay the HELOC off, go do it again. Yep. Uh, awesome. And just keep on going. And then, so then what happens is, um, let's say you do that five times. Yep. And you're sitting with, you know, let's just you use easy numbers. You got 60000 in each house, and each house is worth $100,000. you have done that five times, so you've got 40000 in equity off of each house. Um, so you're sitting there with 200000 in equity. Right. Then what, what I have done is you go and you go to the bank and say, I'd like to put all of these houses on one loan. So I've got one, it's called a portfolio loan, okay. get one portfolio loan. Now I know I've got $200,000 in equity and you're not going to let me take all of that. But can I go get me a hundred thousand dollar line of credit against it? Mm -hmm. That's where it gets, you know, like I said, um, that's not something they like to do. There are several sure. that won't even do lines of credit there. It's just a non-starter. Okay. Uh, so you got to build that relationship and find build it up. Yeah. That's good. Wow. What is your, um, do you have just like one rental or one property that you just love? That's just killing it for you. Um, I love them all for different reasons. Yeah. I have some that are like a thorn in my side. Is mm -hmm. that? <laughs> yeah. Those, um, I understand that. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you know, I love them all for different reasons. Part of it is, um, I've got some that cash flow really well and I mm -hmm. love that. I've got other properties that, um, you know, one of the things I love to do is just to go into a space and reimagine it. Uh, and so I get to, you know, use my creative side when we're renovating a house. Right. So imagine what it could be, how to renovate it, pick out all of the, the finishes, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So um, from that standpoint, you know, the individual houses that we have done, I absolutely love those because you just take something that most people would walk like my wife wouldn't even walk in half of them. Right. Um, well, it had a tree in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you take it and you turn it into, you know, this, this really gorgeous house. Yep. Um, but then you've got some other deals that are, um, there's nothing flashy about them. They're just apartment complexes. That's just a deal. Yeah. But you know what? They're consistent. Uh, and they, you know, it's just cash flow every month. Yeah. And so I always like to have a balance. Mm. That's good. Um, you ever just lost your tail on something? Um, knock on wood? No, not yet. Not yet. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah, there's always the horror <laughs> stories. You know, this was a great, you know, and I typically heard it whenever I was uh, doing a little bit of research. It's always with, you know, like a single family or a, like a duplex. They just, yeah. they're, they're just, they just, it just did not end out well. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I know it's probably going to sound, um, you know, a little arrogant and I don't mean for it to at, by any means, but I think... Uh, where I have an advantage is the years of, of lending and the finance mm -hmm. background. Um, it's in the analysis. Yeah. So if your analysis is right on the front end, you should not. You should be fine on the back. You should not lose. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the market can turn. And I'm sure that's happened in other locations or even 
people here, but we've been fortunate enough where the market hasn't turned here yet. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just making sure you have enough room in your deal. Yeah. Um, some people I know will, will, you know, put it up to the ring bolt of, of what makes it a viable deal. Um, and for me, I don't do that. I, I'd like to make sure there's plenty of cushion, leave yeah. a little bit of space. Yeah. And, and your, you know, your background and skill gives you the ability yeah. to analyze probably a little bit more in depth than your average yeah. uh, investor would look at it. I mean, our worst one, we did a, we did a flip last year. Um, I projected that we, I would make somewhere around 70, 80,000. Um, we ended up making 20. Mm. So it's still positive, but not, you know, yeah, not where you're not, at. Not what you thought it was. It was just one of those things more went into it than I thought. Yep. And I misjudged the market and didn't sell it for what I thought. So when those two converged together, yeah, yeah so but at least you didn't lose money. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's always a positive. Yeah. <laughs> I always say as long as we're breaking even. And, and um, the other Somebody thing. Somebody got a great house on the other side too. Exactly. You know, it you help you help more than just yourself. And that I love that because he was actually active duty military. Mm -hmm. So. Awesome. You know, it's like, hey, I, yeah, I'll, we'll cut it down as far as we can yeah. cut it for you. Um, I had a thought and it just flooded by. That's because I interrupted you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, so real estate, you know, so. Um, you're uh, how long have you been an active uh, realtor? Has it been a couple of years, one year, three? So seven? active, active. I started in May of nineteen when May I left 19. banking. Okay, so not that long. Did you just get into it because it was the natural path for your, you know, your mindset of investing? Yeah. Okay. That, that was kind of that was kind of the goal. Is um, yeah, I knew this is where I wanted to go, and like you said, it was just the natural progression. That's good. How did that? How twenty twenty shape up for you? 2020 actually ended up being good. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, I guess it depends on what standard you're holding it to. Um, I'm not out here, you know, trying to be the best agent. I'm not out here trying to, right. you know, set goals for how much I've sold and that sort of thing. Right. You're doing it for your investment side. Yeah. So, um, you, you know, but yeah, 2020, as far as helping other clients, uh, it was pretty good. I think, you know, we just as far as helping of uh, Others, I grossed around 50. That's great. So, yeah, I mean, the, uh, you know, average uh, agent across the states does four to six deals a year. Yeah, um, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, four to six homes a year. Um, yeah. And they're making twenty four to $35,000. So wow. you're, then, above, you're above average, man. Congratulations. Look at that. Yeah, you like weren't even trying. Star. Yeah, well, um, we'll get you a gold star. Um, Jamie, while we're, whenever we're done, we need a gold star. This year has been a little bit slower. I don't know if you guys have seen that, um, but it's been a little bit slower. But I've also, it's probably because my, my mindset has shifted mm -hmm. um, to where I'm not, you, you know, last year it was I had to sell yeah. to eat. Uh, and when you, you, you know, when we've been able to grow our rental business and you don't have to sell to eat, um, you, you know, yeah, the hunger's not there anymore. Yeah. Well, it's just I, I'm focusing on building that and yeah. I'm focusing on fixing that margin. Mm -hmm. And so, like most people, it's hard to multitask and it's hard to have different focuses. Yep. So yeah, that's great. Um, so you said your your wife was an entrepreneur as well, is right? Yeah. What is it that she does? So uh, she's been a wedding coordinator and a wedding planner for over ten years. Okay. Um, and it was kind of crazy, but uh, right when I decided to leave banking, we decided to open our own wedding venue in Seymour. Mm. So we own the Ivy House, uh, which is an 1800s farmhouse wedding and event venue. That's awesome. So, yeah, that year was a whole, you know, open a wedding venue. It was risky. It was yeah. a risky year. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, it was kind of a whirlwind. Um, but she loves it. It's something that she's wanted to do for a long yeah. time. She's, you know, in my opinion, she's the best out there at it. So You're not biased? No, not at all. <laughs> um, how many weddings does she do a year? I know, like, weddings in this area are, like, top, like, I, the only other location that does more weddings is, like, Vegas, isn't yeah. that right? Yeah, weddings are crazy. Um, so it's Vegas, then, you know, the Gatlinburg, Seymour, Sevierville location. Yeah, um, and I think it's, it, you know, it's probably skewed because you get a lot of out of town, and we don't have as many out of town. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, 5% of ours are out of town. Okay. Uh, a lot of ours are actually the Knoxville market okay. um, and a lot of the Sevier County market. Um, so this year, I think we're going to do um, around 60 yeah, so May and October are your busy, like your... Your wedding months. Yeah, and so we're just coming out of May. 
um, October, I think there's three, at least three a week, every week. That's nuts. The whole month of May. Um, and I think it's, you know, the majority I'd credit to her. Yeah. Um, and it's just her personality. And um, one of the things that, that we tried to do to set us apart was, um, you know, 10 years of coordinating, she saw when you go to the wedding venue, you're driving, you're, everyone is running around like crazy, trying to make sure everything's mm-hmm. good and it's all set. And so everything that we've done has been with that in mind and how can we take the stress away? Yep. How can we peel back some of that and make it just relaxed and easygoing? Um, so that's the philosophy. And then the other philosophy where we're geared is to be affordable. Um, when you look at prices, we're about half price of everybody else. Mm. And that's intentional. Right. Um, and it's not that we, the product isn't there and we couldn't charge more. It's that, um, we don't, we don't want to, we want it to be where anybody can come in and, and have a beautiful wedding. Yeah. So <clears throat> knowing that you had, you had mentioned that one of the big deals for the 10 years that she had done, it was seeing everybody run and crazy and all that stuff. How have you made it easier uh, with that in mind? What have you guys done that's different than everybody else? So um, a couple of different things. One, we've included as much as we can. So a lot of places you go to, they don't have, you know, tables, chairs, mm-hmm. linens. So we've got all of that. Decor is included. The other thing we try to do is to give you more space. So um, more time. Okay. To get things done. One of our packages, because the house is absolutely amazing. So you can actually rent it um, for the whole weekend. So you can come in Friday, set everything up, take your time. Uh, the bride and the bridesmaids can stay in the house overnight, wake up the next morning and just kind of have and breakfast and chill and get ready. And um, those are a lot of fun to see because everyone's just so relaxed. Yeah, they're not driving from Gatlinburg yeah. from their cabin trying to bring everything, haul it all in. and Yeah, it's all set up. It's <clears> all ready to go. And then we we offer a lot of that. You know, if you want us to set it up and, and you know, do the decor, all of that, so you, you don't care have of it. to. Yeah, it makes it easier. That's pretty sweet. That's yeah. awesome. Um, what do you, what do you guys do for fun? I mean, I know you, I know work life balance is important for a lot of people and you've yeah. banking industry 15 years. Do you develop any hobbies or besides investing in weddings? What, what is it you guys like to like so, to do? You know, we've got two small children, so fun is all relative. Mm-hmm. Um, because yeah. anytime you're on a trip with a four year old and eight year old, so much fun, somebody's going to be upset yeah. about something. <clears throat> Um, but you know, our thing is we want to travel and we haven't got to do as much of it as we would like, but, um, you know, they're big Disney fans. Um, apparently that's a vacation to some people. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, no, we, thank you. <laughs> we do, we've done that a couple of times. We just got back to, from the beach. We're trying different beaches to, yeah. you know, kind of figure out where, where our beach is. Have you found it yet? Um, not yet. No. Where no. have you been? So, you know, we've been all over Florida. Uh, everywhere down there. Um, we just got back from Hilton Head. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a beautiful uh, place. Um, the mixture of people was not our cup of tea. Okay. Um, we did go over to, to Beaufort, South Carolina, which is amazing. Um, Never been. Old, there's a lot of history, old houses, very yeah. similar to Charleston, that okay. sort of thing. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of our new goal is to just travel and figure out where you um, want to be. Yeah, the, the key is it doesn't have to be, that's one of the things we keep telling ourselves, is it doesn't have to be this big thing. It's finding space within the week. Mm-hmm. Um, like, for example, before I came here, I could not do this when I was banking. Um, I was doing some work on in the computer, had a couple of things I needed to do, called her, and she said, hey, we're going to go grab lunch and go to the park. So I got up off my I'll desk, <laughs> went over to the park, and spent you know an hour just sitting there playing on the playground. Yep. Um, and those are things that, that you don't get to do when you're, you know, grinding on the nine to five that yep. this lifestyle affords you. That's awesome. Yeah. That, uh, that's freedom. Yeah. I mean, freedom's if to everybody. Yeah. And that is, I mean, especially with little ones. Now it comes uh, with the price. I mean, there's times yesterday it was Memorial day. I got up, went around, checked on some properties, went back and, you know, had the family time. Uh, there's times 11 o'clock at night. I'm, you know, pumping away call. on the computer. Yep. So, it, you know, there's a give and take with it, but. That's good. Yeah. I, a lot of people don't realize that the, the hardest part of um, first off to get to that freedom is, is just taking the step. You know, you gotta, you gotta analyze, you gotta make sure you can, you can do it without, you know, going <laughs> upside yeah. down. Uh, but once you do the, just the freedom of life kind of kicks in. It's like, yeah, wow. You well, know, it's like, I'm going on vacation, you know, for the eighth time this year. 
Yeah. That's not never like you wouldn't even think of done that, you know. No, I would have I, I been fired. Yeah. <laughs> like on the spot. Yeah. It's like, um, hey, we're, we're going to go from Hilton Head over to Buford. We're going to try out Destin and Panama. Yeah. And, yeah. Eh. But that's where that whole, you know, like, you know, back to the whole talk of margin. That's where that comes in. It's mm-hmm. because, okay, now I can free up time. But not only have I freed up time, it does me no good if I don't have the finances yeah. to, to achieve that. Um, the other big piece of that margin that we like to do is, you know, we love to find ways to give back and, and serve and mm-hmm. things like that. And I can do that. Yeah. You know, if I've got a big margin and I see a need and that needs a thousand dollars this month, it's all right. Yep. Let's go meet that need give because need. we can, we've been blessed enough to do that. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's really good. We, uh, I'm sure, you know, our real estate company, we get back a, you know, quite a bit during, yeah. uh, during the year, we try to go, you know, at least once a quarter to some local uh, organizations, yeah. uh, some charities, that kind of stuff. So I actually just had Paul and Terry Danis in here uh, last week. They're the uh, yeah. owner, co- co-founders and founders of uh, Live It. And I got to hear their their story about why they even did what or doing what they're yeah. doing. And uh, I had no idea Paul just up and quit his, uh, his you know, nine to five you know job. They were on the, the board at a church and the, he just yeah. quit. He was trying to tell Terry and she didn't listen. He quit. She comes back. She's like, what are you doing? He's like, I tried telling you. I quit. You know? Yeah, I quit. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's really cool just to, and that's the whole point of this podcast that I'm doing is I'm just trying to like, I like to hear cool stories. I like to hear people's why, their inspiration. Yeah. How, how did you get, you know, 2019, you had five rentals so to 65, 65 now, uh, yeah. a year and a half later, essentially. Trust in the numbers. Yeah. And then literally 2020 was like shut down. So you had to buy a ton of stuff during 2020. Yeah. Whenever you weren't even allowed to go outside. Yeah. Well, you know, we're so. essential though. That, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. Realtors are essential. Yeah. We are very essential. Uh, you know, interestingly, uh, I've served on the board of Livet for gosh, seven, eight years. Oh, it's that. so long now that I, I can't even remember. I think I was supposed to roll off like five years ago. And they just keep, they keep pulling you back in. Yeah. No, wait, Dustin, hold on. Yeah. Um, And I'll I'll tell you real quick um, to the Ivy house. One of the things that we are trying uh, our darndest to get off the ground is um, we want to do some raised bed gardens. Okay. uh, And all that is we're going to grow fresh food and donate all the food that we grow back to local food pantries. Because that's something that, you know, the food pantries do everything that they can, uh, but they're limited on their resources. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those that are in need don't get that f- those fresh fruits and vegetables and right. things like that. So yeah. I don't think it's going to be, we don't have the space to make it some massive garden. Yeah. But 500 acre garden of. <laughs> it's a way to utilize what we have been blessed with to grow natural food and That's great. give it back. That's really um, awesome. How did you come up with that? What was the. Uh, um, it was just, I was actually, it was back, you know, when I was. Um, still sit in my office in the banking days. And it was one of those crazy dreaming. things where I wasn't even dreaming. I'm just sitting here typing away in this whole concept, like instantly just snapping your yeah. fingers was in my head. And I was like, okay, God, I know, I know yeah. what you're trying to I tell guess me. I know what I'm doing now. I don't know why you're telling me to garden. Cause I don't even know how my kids are still alive. How am I supposed <laughs> to grow food? But yeah, it is a miracle that we can keep our children alive. Yeah. Isn't it? It is. I've got a, I've got an eight month old who, just every time I look at him, he's choking on something off the ground. <laughs> I've got three other ones. And yeah. I don't remember any of the other kids choking on items on the floor as much as this guy does. <laughs> it's every time I turned around, I pulled a piece of plastic out of his throat the other day. Oh gosh. Like you talk about scary. That's scary. That, yeah. That'll... Like I can deal with about anything else. I told my wife, I was like, if he's choking, you're up. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Or if I do, I'm just panicky. Yeah. And I, it is not, I walk away. You know, I, I tell people uh, on kind of a different note, it's like living with a bunch of tiny terrorists. It is. You know, fact. Yeah. Like, I mean, they, they, they roll through fear and intimidation. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm like, I'm the adult. This should not be happening (laughs) like this, but I said, no, okay, (laughs) listen. Yeah. uh, So my, my oldest son, uh, who's four, he, uh, he loves swords and knives and that kind of stuff. So, uh, my wife was stripping his bed down. I think he, you know, peed the bed or yeah. something crazy one day, and um, she stripped the bed down, and he had just knives in his bed from where he had just been <laughs> taking knives from the the kitchen and and sleeping with them. And they're not like steak knives, so yeah. you know we're safe. It's just you know some butter knives are really, really dull. It's still scary. It is so scary. And then there was like a bowl of mashed potatoes. Yeah, you know, in there it's like. You know, there's always that moment when you look at your kids and you're like, How? is he going to be like, 
uh, especially with boys, you wonder like when this child grows up, is he going to be an upstanding citizen yeah. or is this going to go the other direction? Yeah. Are we okay or not? Cause right now I feel like there's a tipping point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, we're just, you know, we're kind of powering through it. Yeah. Um, we don't know what's going to happen on the other end, but uh, most people that meet him love him. Yeah. And they say he's all boys. So like, I have some promising, you know, um, we you know, get the same thing. You know, like, yeah, yeah. You just don't know. It's like he was, the first two kids were, you know, precious little girls and they're playing dolls. And then this old boy comes around, he's like stealing cars. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the very first thing he ever did was he just wants to see people's cars. Like, where's your car? Yeah. So we go sit in cars all day and, and now he's got knives and a baseball bat and, yeah. you know, so we'll see what happens. So, um, my son is eight and it's bad when your eight year old can outsmart you. Mm. And especially when he does it on a daily basis. So, um, <laughs> Put it, numbers in front of him trying to outsmart <laughs> Yeah, he's not as into math, um, which is slightly disappointing. Um, but he can tell you literally. I'm not even exaggerating. He can tell you every country in the world. He knows their flag and their capital. Hmm. Uh, he knows which ones are Christian, which ones are communist, which ones like each other, which ones don't. Oh, wow. Um, he said that he wants to be a missionary or a geographer when he grows up. So we'll see. Pretty sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know any of that. Yeah, I mean, like we're in America. <laughs> <laughs> I know I Texas. <laughs> yeah, I know Texas. I can, yeah, we can name the states for sure. Um, so, uh, Dustin, before we kind of wrap this up, man, is there anything, any kind of takeaway that you would want somebody listening uh, to get from you? Um, you know, I would say the biggest takeaway, the biggest thing that I could, that I would love for people to get from me is to um, just, just trust in where you have been led to go. Uh, if you feel strongly that it's something that God has, has led you to do, um, he will see you through that. Uh, I know for me, when I was trying to make that decision to, to leave, all the valuable resources around me were saying, make sure you have a safety net. Make sure that if when you leave, you need this much set aside. Yep. If something goes wrong, um, make sure that that's there. And I just remember, you know, it's almost like audibly hearing him say, I am your safety net. Yep. I'm telling you to do this. If you go put this in place, you're not trusting me. Yeah, you don't. Yep. Yeah. And we didn't have it in place, and it worked out. I'm yep. not saying it was easy. It was lean. Yeah. But there was knowledge in all of the struggles and all of that. There's there's information. There's something. There's a purpose behind it. Yeah, that's good. So wow. that, that would be yeah. the takeaway. Faith. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. Good deal, Destin. Well, I appreciate you being here, man. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Absolutely.